capitalism, all of the gains in automation, it goes to the owner class. All you have to do is have everyone be an owner, and now suddenly, any gain in automation is a gain for everybody. If you grow just one thing, it may not grow as well as if it grows with another thing. A good example of that is called the, the Three Sisters Method of Farming. There is definitely multi-apartment buildings or multi-families that do do uh, pass A hundred million dollars that they gave to Joe Rogan that they would kind of be out if they bring is that a bigger number or is two billion a bigger number i don't know Sam. it's a tough one i know it's really hard and maybe maybe yes. comparing numbers is not uh jeremy strong gotta go kill a jenny i still don't think you should kill her i don't think it's a good idea it's a ghost dude welcome back everybody to bread theory tonight we're gonna be continuing on whoops I'll just get my cord for my phone uh continuing on with our uh reading of a people's history of the united states by howard zinn we are in chapter six this is talking about uh, the early women's movement in the united states uh, and about the condition of slave women as well so let's see before i start I'm going to mention that uh, Bread Theory is a proud member of Left Signal Boost TV. That may even be the place that you're watching this from now. But Left Signal Boost TV is a collective of... We have quite a few now. Let's see how many we're up to. Let's, let's count. Um, let's see... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen members now are in the collective. We all post our content there, and uh, a lot of us do live streams to the, the the page as well. It is on Facebook. Just go to facebook.com slash left signal boost TV, and I'll post in the chat as well. And you can find out about all kinds of cool leftist content that's going on. And we're just trying to help each other out uh, to, to boost the algorithm together and share our collective effort to, you know, push back against uh, the alt-writers who right now dominate the platform. Um, much to the chagrin of a lot of people who have, say, uh, older parents or grandparents online. <laughs> because Facebook is kind of a, a cesspool of right-wing ideology. But we're trying to do something about that, have an alternative. So, yeah, if, uh, as, as uh, R.M. Brown says, if your Mima or your Peepaw has been spending too much time on the Facebook, here's a place that you can send them to, and they can get at least a different perspective. So I highly recommend it. Go check it out. Uh, we just had last weekend, or last Friday, I should say. Not quite the weekend. Uh, uh it was Friday night, so it was, it was technically the weekend. <laughs> we'll, we'll say that. Uh, we had our second annual, uh, Leftist Karaoke Night. I have the video processed. I just have to, well, I, I guess I have it downloaded. I don't have it completely processed. I need to cut out the intro, because it's a pretty long intro. I was waiting for a while for people to show up. Um, so... I'm going to cut that off, and then I will put it up on YouTube so you can see. It was it was a small turnout this time, but that's okay. It was just me and Trisha for a while, and then and then just me for a while with our, our lovely audience members who are cheering me on. So it was still a lot of fun, and we still plan on doing it next month, uh, September, the fourth Friday. It's going to be a regular fourth Friday thing. Hello, James. How are you? That was a strange way of saying hello, but I meant hello, not hello. So let's see, what, what is the fourth Friday in September going to be? So we have the 2nd, the 9th, the 16th, the 23rd is going to be our next Leftist Karaoke Night at 9 p.m. Central Standard Time. Um, I'll be putting up a, an event on Facebook as well, and that should correct to whatever your local time is. So you can be sure not to miss it this next time. And it's just a, it's just a fun thing, to, you know. We sing all kinds of songs. doesn't have to be leftist stuff necessarily. It's more about a bunch of leftists getting together, having some fun, blowing off steam, and trying to kind of sing back the darkness that is creeping in around 
all over the place in this country. So, yeah, that's it. It is very fun. And, and I was glad to have you in the audience, James. You were a big support. That was really nice to have. But I think we are going to get into the book now. Uh, what do you say? Is this view still okay? Let's see. I'm going I'm to take a look at it on my phone, see if I can still read the text. Yeah. Looks like I still can. So we are, we are talking about the view of women uh, uh, in the, the 1800s. I believe we're still... Hey, Natalie. I was glad to have you there as well. It was a fun time. Uh, so I believe we're still in the part where we're looking at this this man who has written a woman's uh, etiquette book. He was a very early mansplainer who was also apparently trying to make a living off of it by publishing his oh-so-helpful advice. So let's see. <laughs> let's get back. Let's dive into the book again and see what he has to say. This is chapter six. Uh, the, the, the title of the chapter is The Intimately Oppressed, and it's about the oppression of women, uh, white women, working class women, as well as, as slave women. And I believe even native women are, are covered. Yes, they are um, in this chapter. Are you both on the same Facebook? No, it's not showing up, both of you. Oh, that's because James is on. He's moved over to the Cool Kids Club on, on Twitch. Yep. How, how'd you like that ad, James? <laughs> I'm sorry. I shouldn't poke you that much. I appreciate you being on Twitch. It really does help. And it gives me an audience that I can then raid into other people at the end of the stream with. And you can find out about other cool leftists. And I can help spread my name around yeah i really do appreciate people being on on twitch that is that is the channel that i am i'm monetized on now i'm not even monetized on on facebook or uh, well i guess i am somewhat monetized on facebook i can ha i can do private events but i don't really have an interest in that so i'm for all intents and purposes not monetized on facebook and the Facebook algorithm really throttles me pretty hard, uh, as it seems to do for basically all streamers. Like Facebook seems to have put together this this streaming service on on their site just to have something to compete with YouTube and and Twitch, but they don't really put a lot into it. It's not a real great service. There's not a lot you can do with it. Um, I guess the one good thing is it automatically archives your videos just as, as you know, live streaming to YouTube does. So not, not monetized on YouTube at all. I only have 113 subscribers there. So if you're not subscribed to my YouTube channel, now would be a good time. Where is my share button? In fact, probably in the home screen, huh? Hmm. Oh, well. I'll, I'll give you the long form link then. Yeah, Twitch t Twitch has a learning curve, but I'm always happy to help people figure out what's going on. There's a lot of emotes to, to get used to. And you should know that if you do go to, to Twitch and you do subscribe, which is only $5 a month or free, if you have an Amazon Prime account that you link to your account, your Twitch account, you can subscribe to one channel a month with that for free and then you don't see the ads and you also get custom emotes so I'll, i'm going to do my custom emotes in a second here but first i'm going to give you the link to my youtube channel just in case you're not subscribed there because this is where i keep all my archives i haven't been good about keeping up by with putting them into playlists lately but i'm going to get back on that and it shouldn't be too long before everything's up to date but i have a lot of playlists because i'd bounce around a lot from topic to topic so for people that are just concerned with with one thing or another, one author, want to just read straight through a book uh, with me, then that's a, that's an easier way to do it than to have to sift through and, and find, you know, oh, here's part one, here's part two, that sort of thing. Anyway, here's the channel link. Ooh. How was everyone's weekend, by the way? 
you will get a custom pepperoni roll as soon as you subscribe, James, and I will make one for you. All right, so here's the YouTube link. If you're not subscribed, please do so. It costs $5 a month to subscribe, or if you have a Amazon Prime account, you can link that to your Twitch, and you get one free subscription to the channel of your choice a month. So in either case, Bezos takes his cut. He gets about half of what what is uh, given to me. And, but it is a way to support me and support this channel. And who knows, maybe someday uh, I can make this a you know even a part-time gig. Um, if you got a big enough audience, there are plenty of people on Twitch that do this full time. I don't know if there's any full time streamers who cover theory, though. There are some other theory channels, and if there are any up tonight, maybe we'll raid into one. You can use uh, a prepaid visa, you can use a bank card. Uh, as long as you're not doing it, it might screw it up with the prepaid card if you're doing a recurring charge, but if you're just doing a one time payment, I don't see why I wouldn't take that. You know, your credits are as ones and zeros as, as any other form. But no pressure, James. If, if that's not something you feel like doing right now, you definitely don't have to. I'd really appreciate I really just appreciate you being in the audience and participating and having a good time. But anyway, be, before we actually get into it, let, let's slow, the, slow things down just a little bit. Curious about your weekends, Natalie, James, anyone else? Um, how did it go for you all? Uh, Amanda and I went to another state park this weekend. We've been trying to keep up with... Oh, hey there, Natalie on Twitch. Look at that. Uh, anyway, Amanda and I went to another state park this weekend. We, we checked out Minneopa Park, which I went... It, it's If you have any idea what Minnesota geography is like, it's down by Mankato. It's like 20 minutes away, not even. And I went to school... Um, I did my undergraduate there, and then my graduate was mostly done in the cities, but it was still through MSU. And in all that time, I never managed to make it to Minneopa Park, but I'm glad I did this this weekend because it was beautiful. The the river was, or the creek, I guess it is, that that goes over the waterfalls was way down, so it was mostly just trickle, but it was still quite gorgeous. And just the natural rock formations, I got a lot of great photos. Um, so it was, it was pretty good. So Natalie says it's been nice. My son is in from Cali. Oh, that's that's wonderful. And he's making dinner for us right now. Wow. I got out of the kitchen as a second cook. <laughs> it's not always good. Yeah, I've heard her saying something to that effect. Uh, yeah, my brother lives in California as well. He's He's in San Francisco, which, man, definitely envious of that most of the time. Always good weather there. Uh, I don't care what, who was it, Hemingway or whatever said that the, 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 uh, what was it? Oh, something about just how <laughs> San Francisco is always cold. Uh, but, uh, yeah, yeah, he really enjoys it there. And I wish I could afford to live there, but I cannot. Um, so James says, I try to participate and have a good time on your show and DJ Rob's both if work doesn't stop me. Yeah, I really appreciate your participation, James. And James went on the kayaks with my 10 year old daughter again Saturday. Oh, that's great. I would love to get my kids into kayaking. I think they would love it a lot. Um, that's been one of, uh, mine and Amanda's goals is to get a kayak, like a two person one so we can have another way to do kind of a low cost, yet active outdoors, fun activity sort of thing. We've been trying to, to look for more of that rather than spending as much money at, at like, you know, bars, restaurants, stuff like that. Not that we did a lot of that anyway, but it's just one more thing to do. That's pretty low cost once you, once you have the initial invest investment. Yeah, an ad just popped up. I'm sorry about that. Four ads? Ugh. Yeah, that, that is pretty normal. 
Um, so the best way to avoid it again, though, is to subscribe. But no pressure, you know, I'll, I'll, I will cherish you all as, as audience members just as much whether or not you are subscribed. So don't worry about that. Okay, so you want to make a one-time donation to my channel. Uh, there should be the option to subscribe. So if you're on your mobile, you should be able to tap the screen and then a little button will pop up and say subscribe. Otherwise, what does it look like on desktop? Let me click on someone's channel. Click on Sans Soul's channel right now. Okay. So yeah, if you're on if you're on uh, a desktop or a laptop, subscribe button should just be down in the right hand corner. And it'll give you options. And again, you can link up your Prime, Amazon Prime account, and then you get a free subscription every month. So if that's a way you want to do it, well, wait a minute, that guy looks really familiar. I wish I knew who all these people were. Anyway, so yeah. If you still need more guidance, let me know. I can help you more. Hi oh, on your iPhone. Okay. So yeah, so if you just tap on the screen that you see me on, it should pop up if you do feel like donating. And then oh yeah, I was gonna show you my custom emotes. So let's go to my stream manager. Here we go. So here's the cool custom emotes that you can get only by subscribing to my channel. We have Powdered Toast Man, we have the Bread Theory symbol, and then, uh, I don't know what you even call him, like Mega Kropotkin or something like that. So those are the three you get for subscribing. Okay. Maybe, maybe they put it in a different place in Android. I have an iPhone, so that's what I go with. But that's cool. Oh, you do have Amazon. No, I have Amazon too. Most people do. Like, It's just a necessity of life these days to get certain things that you can't just find at a you know, Target or Walmart or whatever. It's, it's basically just a combination of all big box stores plus some cool small st stores that attach themselves to it as well. But yeah, they're a horrible company. They really prey on small companies, tending to find products that are selling well by their small companies and then just replicating them and selling it themselves. It's like having an in-store brand, but of course, because their size is so huge and they can control the algorithm, if that ever happens, the small creator or a small business never stands a chance. So but yeah, you should be able to, to link up your Amazon and then you can get a free subscription. Oh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> so instead of a pizza party, James, you got a free Amazon card. Well, I guess that's a that's a modern twist on an old favorite. Um, yeah, I got I got like a, a prepaid card for being a good little worker myself lately. It's actually pretty, <laughs> it's like a hundred dollar card. It was actually pretty nice of my boss to do that. Um, but yeah, no, no health insurance, though. <laughs> I guess uh, I guess I can use that towards health insurance. <laughs> uh, all right. I appreciate it. Ooh, what is that emote that you found? Seems good. Huh. I don't think I've seen that one before. Twitch has a bunch of emotes that you get just for using the, the, the service. So maybe that's one that they've cycled through because they tend to you know, pick and choose and pull some and, and put more in. Anyway, enough rambling. Let's get into the book. Yeah, yeah. The Kappa. That's that's a classic one, for sure. You even call it Kappa? Oh, Lo it's called Lol now? Okay. I've always heard it described as the Kappa. Which, for the uninitiated, if you're ever in a new Twitch chat and you want to make it clear that you're just joking... Use, use the kappa emote at the end of what you say, and then people will know. Because <laughs> sarcasm, irony does not always telegraph well on in print form. So, so there you have it. 
There's your little Twitch etiquette tutorial for the day. But let's get into the book here. So we're, we're, we're looking at how uh, a man in the 1800s is, is telling women to behave. Here we go. In the Young Lady's Book of 1830, quote, In whatever situation of life a woman is placed from her cradle to her grave, a spirit of obedience and submission, pliability of temper, and humility of mind oh. are required from her. Why? <laughs> That's the kind of question that gets your knuckles wrapped with the ruler, I would imagine. Let's look up this young lady's book of 1830. Oh, God. Let's see if we can find it. Oh, yes, the 1830 edition. It's in the open library. Oh, I'll, I'll send a link to you in the chat. Oh, you can even listen to an audiobook version of it. Wow. Let's see now. It's only saying there A. Bowen, Carter and Hendy, Carrie and Leah. But it's not saying their first names. I bet you they are all men though. What does the cover look like? Oh, it just says who it's published by. The Young Lady's Book man uh, a manual of elegant Recreations, Exercises, and Pursuits, Second Edition, Boston, published by Carter, Mendy, and Bar Barcock, yeah, there's a name for that book, and Abel Bowen, you know, Abel Bowen, there's at least one man who's part of, part of that, uh, well, you know, here's the, here's the link for it, in case you're just itching to get your hands on a, on a digital copy of it, here you go. <laughs> Oh, thank you so much, Natalie, for your subscription. I really appreciate it. I see the notification popped up, too. Yay. Um, now, if I was on only Twitch, there, there'd be ways for me to, like, have, like, emojis bounce across the screen and stuff like that. But because I'm multi-streaming, things are a little bit more streamlined. And what you sacrifice for that is a little bit of interactivity, unfortunately. So I'll just, I'll spam a bunch of emotes for you. And that'll just have to... That'll have to suffice for your celebration. Oh, and the other thing that I, I don't think I've ever even mentioned uh, was that by watching the channel, you get channel points. Now, I don't have my channel points set up to do, do anything at the moment. Uh, but I, there are ways to connect it so that stuff gets triggered when you do it. I have no idea what this is, but that looks like someone dancing. So we'll, we'll add a bunch of dancing emotes. Yay. Boy, a lot of animated emotes these days. Couple from Freddy Yeti, another great channel you should check out. So just by being on Twitch, I get gift subs from all these random channels all the time, which is kind of fun. You might find that too if you're, you know, just just try being part of a few communities and, and see if anyone will gift you a sub. Or oftentimes it happens even when you're offline. Let's see what else we got here. There's got to be at least one more cool emote to spam. Is that a party hat? We'll do party hat and a well played. There we go. There's your emote wall, Natalie. Thanks so much. So, channel points. You'll notice every once in a while the channel points will, I think they turn green or they turn red or something like that. If you click on that again, that tells Twitch that you're still watching, but you also get points for doing that. And I can set things up where I have rewards for 
turning in a number of points. So I'll be notified if you redeem points at the very least. But it could be anything. It could be like, you know, take a drink of water. It could be um, say something nice. I've seen that a lot. Say something nice about the person that you're talking about, which can be hard, uh, depending on which monsters of history or the present we're, we're looking at. Uh, but fun, nonetheless. Uh, it could be... I, I, I mean, there's there's some really great channels like I, Dan Simpson, where he really gets into the channel points and it will, like, take over part of control of his stream and, like, stretch his face or make him talk in a silly voice or, you know, uh, make flashing lights happen or, or punch the person who who's on screen or punch Dan himself, stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <sighs> Oh, I appreciate that, Avenging Pineapple. History can be boring. This history is not boring. It's it's more infuriating than anything, I would say. Hey, there you go. There's your first custom emote use. Awesome. All right. Well, I hope your dinner goes well, Natalie, too. If you have to dip out for a bit, hey, no problem. I really appreciate the sub. Anyway, here we go. And one woman wrote in 1850 in the book Greenwood Leaves, quote, oh, boy, look this one True up too. feminine genius is ever timid, doubtful, and clingily dependent, a perpetual oh. childhood. Oh my god. That, I'm sorry. That, 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 that's so close to, as, as Amanda likes to put it, you know, pediolite drinkers. Um, that being a euphemism for, well, you can probably figure it out. Perpetual childhood? What grown-ass man wants a perpetual, clingy, doubtful child to be married to? That's just so disgusting. What was... I don't even want to look up the name of this book. That's too gross. God, how are you... Such infantilization. It's really gross. Amanda said she was going to come on, but she hasn't yet. But maybe if we all clap really hard and, and truly believe, we can will her off the couch and she'll come hang out with us. Oh. Anyway, here we go. More of this couch <laughs> take. And a woman said this too. Like, Another book. Recollections of on. a Southern Matron. Quote, If any habit of his annoyed me, I spoke it once or twice calmly, then bore it quietly. Give oh, just hanging on in quiet desperation your entire life. This is what was this memoirs of a, a southern lady? Oh man, I'm gonna back it. I'll back it up. What was the name of this stupid book? Childhood. Another book. Recollections of a Southern Matron. Recollections of a Southern Matron. Let's find this gem. Mm, I would like to see an entire one. Or at least, uh, here's the, its record in the Library of Congress. Caroline Howard Gilman and Joseph Meredith Toner. Oh, oh, it's in the Joseph Meredith Toner collection. Gotcha. Okay, so it, it tells where you can check out a digital copy from a Michigan library, too. So here you go. You want <laughs> recollections of a southern matron? I'm putting the link for you. Ay, ay, ay. So, so difficult to get through some of this stuff. There you go. Oh, there's clappy modes. I'll show you, James. It's it's under the global one. You can do like this one. 
Oh wait, that says catch? This looks like clapping to me. Let's see what else you can do. Oh, I cannot cheer in my own channel. Oh, cheering. That's a way to direct donate as well. So if you don't want to subscribe for whatever reason, you can also do that. I think that suffices as a pretty good clap. Yeah, there you go. Now that, that's kind of more of a wave, but hey, it'll work. At least that's what it looks like to me. I bet there are other channels that have clapping emotes, custom. Some of these channels, like Riverboat Jack, has tons of custom emotes. And I know I have more slots, which is why I keep trying to entice you, James, with the, uh, the pepperoni roll emote promise. But I just haven't gotten around to it yet. I don't know. There's probably another one for clapping, but I cannot find it at the moment. <sighs> Gross. Anyway, recollections of Southern Matron. Oh, Google put it there? Okay. Well, that works too. <laughs> Here we go. Continuing on in the book. Quote. If any habit of his annoyed me, I spoke it once oh, or twice calmly, no it was going so then slow. bore it quietly. That's just Giving women rules for conjugal and domestic happiness, one book ended with, quote, do not expect too much, unquote. Wow. Just, just give up. Settle. <laughs> that's, that's the advice of the 1800s, ladies. Oh, man. I, I mean, these ideas still linger, obviously, you hear. Uh, especially like preachers seem to like this sort of thing, the, the more conservative ones. I always love telling women how they need to behave to be good, faithful, dutiful wives and stuff like that. And how it's always their duty to please the man and serve him, and blah, 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 blah. But any good relationship needs to be a two-way street. I, I mean, it kind of goes without saying, but apparently not <laughs> in some parts of this country and around the world, really. Good relationships are built on two-way streets of communication, uh, of mutual trust, mutual aid, mutual affection, um, mutual love. Not just one doing everything out of duty and the other taking everything out of entitlement. That's never the recipe for a good, healthy relationship. And, you know, there's no reason it has to be in the, in the way that these people are describing it. You can have good relationships too. Just takes you thinking of the other person as unequal, worthy of all the same things you are. A little bit of empathy, huh? The woman's job was to keep the home cheerful, maintain religion, be nurse, cook, cleaner, seamstress, flower arranger. <laughs> A woman shouldn't read too much and certain books should be avoided. When Harriet Martineau, a reformer of the 1830s, wrote Society in America, one reviewer suggested it be kept away from women. Quote, Such reading will unsettle them for their true station and pursuits. <laughs> they will throw the world back again into confusion. This is always the charge of conservatives. Have you noticed that? Anytime some group of people wants civil rights or wants parity with the, the dominant class or, or dominant demographic, whatever it may be, it's always like, well, this is just too much change and it will confuse people, which is just a complete projection. It confuses them because they have ordered the world as only being possible to be in one certain configuration. And now you are throwing that into sharp doubt. So... And really, do people die if they get too confused? <laughs> what is the worst that can happen by sowing confusion? I mean, will cats and dogs start living together, It'll up be down, and left be right, and, and nothing makes sense anymore if one little thing changes? How fragile must your world be if you think that's the case? Uh, 
and again, it's just a self-projection. It's they're projecting their own fragility onto the world, which is not that fragile. People are not that fragile by and large. But apparently people that are are also very loud and <laughs> like to voice their opinion about such things. A sermon preached in 1808 New York, quote, How interesting yeah. and important are the duties devolved on females as wives. The counselor and friend of the husband who makes it her daily study to lighten his cares, to soothe his sorrows, and to augment his joys. What about her sorrows, her joy, her, you know, suffering? Do those need no attention? This is, this is just the, the one-way street relationship? You know, it's, I mean, and I, I can see why people at this time were so staunchly against divorce, because if it weren't for laws, laws, really, and, you know, uh... I don't know. I don't know. Admonition would be the right word, but prohibition, I guess, would be a better word of of divorce in uh, churches. I don't know why anyone would put up with such a, a a desperate situation as a wife. So yeah, I mean, if your system takes that level of control to maintain, maybe it's not a good system. Maybe it's not as naturally occurring as you've led yourself to believe. Maybe, in fact, you are the unnatural one. who are trying to force relationships to be a certain thing that they just don't work as because everybody is people. Everyone is a person. We're all people. We all have roughly the same basic needs and desires and wants and dreams and all of that sort of thing. And to completely suppress half the earth just for the benefit of the other half? That's not, again, it again, it's just not a good recipe for a good relationship of any kind. Old America was very racist and sexist, but I'm going to just be an asswipe and say it. It has really changed much in two, has it really changed much in two hundred years? It has and it has not. I mean, obviously these ideas are still around. Are still prevalent enough that we've all encountered people that literally think this sort of thing, I would bet. And, uh, but at the same time, with the time that we're talking about, women couldn't even vote, uh, women could not hold office, uh, and for another, what was it, 40, 50 years, black women couldn't still after that. Uh, so yeah, things are better, but they're also very bad in very many places. Patriarchy still rules. Sexism, racism still rule. Uh, it's the reason that the Senate is well overrepresented by men and white men and rich men who make up such a tiny portion of the voting populace. It's the reason that even in the House of Representatives on the national level, we're not really even close to parity. Yeah, they still get voted for, James. That's true, because people are afraid to let things change. The, the, the women, uh, the men that, that hold these opinions still are just like the men of old, very fragile individuals who any little change in their carefully ordered world upsets the entire apple cart. And they lose all sense of self, all sense of belonging in the world. They believe there's no place for, you know, a man anymore in this world. Just, just because, you know, someone got a few rights or something. It's a complete, ironically, hysterical overreaction. But yeah, go on about how <laughs> women are just too emotional <laughs> to hold office when men can't even, men of this time couldn't even fathom a woman being anything but completely docile and subservient, even childlike. But yeah, 
it's it's the women whose temperaments are not fit for the burdens of office. Yeah, those founding fathers were a bunch of scumbags, many of them. And while they had some aspirational stuff, especially in the Declaration of Independence, they did not follow through completely. They 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 copped out and and replaced pursuit of happiness with property. And uh yeah, the rest is, is history that we're still dealing with, where property reigns supreme. Um, we can still focus on the life and liberty part, because that's still in the Constitution. And you can still make a good goddamn argument that if whatever choice a person makes, they can be deprived of food or housing or their life, literally, through, like, say, the death penalty, uh, then they don't have an inalienable right to those things. So even if you leave out pursuit of happiness, that still leaves a lot of rights that are completely unfulfilled in this society. That could be with more socialist ideas. Moving on, though. Who, like a guardian angel, watches over his interests, warns him against dangers, comforts him under trials, and by her pious, assiduous, and attractive deportment, constantly endeavors to render him more virtuous, more useful, more honorable, and more happy. Unquote. Women. Who's well, supposed to do that for women? were also urged, especially since they had the job of educating children, to be patriotic. Uh, of course. One women's magazine. Love the system that, that holds you down. Just, you know, lick that boot harder. What, what a great message for women of the age. And offered a prize to the woman who wrote the best essay on, quote, how may an American woman best show her patriotism, unquote. It was in the 1820s and 1830s, Nancy Cott tells us, the bonds of womanhood, that there was an outpouring of novels, poems, essays, sermons, and manuals on the family, children, and women's role. The world outside was becoming harder, more commercial, more demanding. In a sense, the home carried a longing for some utopian past, some refuge from immediacy. Perhaps it made acceptance of the new economy easier to be able to see it as only part of life, with the home a haven. In 1819, one pious wife wrote, Does quote, indeed, James. The air of the world is poisonous. You must carry an antidote with you or the infection will prove fatal. All this was not at Oh, you must be shut up, shut up like a, a caged bird for your own protection, because you're far too delicate and beautiful, just like that caged bird, to ever be l allowed to make your own decisions out in the real world. This is, I mean, again, it's, it's just the infantilizing view of women, that they're just incapable of making it on their own, and that the world is too cruel for them to possibly stand against. But it's not the world that's too cruel, it's the system, and it's the system that allows that sort of cruelty. It is a system that, that props up, you know, property over people. It's a system that forces inequality, that leads to people to do most of the bad things that are, are done in terms of crime. So, if the world is bad, it's because the system has made it that way. But that also means you can undo that system or remake it differently in a way that would be more likely to, likely to have a different outcome. As Cott points out, to challenge the world of commerce, industry, competition, capitalism, but to make it more palatable. The cult of domesticity for the woman was a way of pacifying her with a doctrine of separate but equal. <laughs> wow, there's a, there's a precursor to the Jim Crow era. Separate but equal. Never has there been a more disingenuous term slapped on a system of, of governing things than that sort of term. We are separate but equal, which just implies in that some are more equal than others. But you're right, James. You know, my mom, too, was a woman. My grandma was a woman. Teachers have been women. Bosses have been women. On and on. What's so bad with what's wrong with women exactly? The answer is nothing. Nothing. They just wanted to keep them in their place because they were afraid that anything 
outside of that would just unravel society. It's amazing how many how many you know times conservatives have sworn that the sky would fall if such and such change happens, and then it happens, and nothing bad happens. Only good things happen. When we get the right to vote, oh, the sky's gonna fall. They're gonna leave all their husbands. You know, same thing with with marriage. You allow women to divorce on their own. You allow them to have their own money separate from their husbands. Well, they, why would they ever get married again? It's like they th it's it's such a projection that they hate themselves so much, or they hate men, other men so much. These these men uh, that they can't imagine a woman ever willfully being with them. It's like it's such a perverse notion of human relationships. Because guess what? Most women enjoy being with men. Whether or not they're attracted to them as anything more than a friend is beside the point. Most women enjoy the company of men. Most men enjoy the, the company of women. Most people would have friendships that were of all genders if just left to their own devices, if there's no social taboo against it. Um... So it's such a strange thing to think that you have to force those relationships to happen in just so, or that all goes out the window and women just move off to the Isle of Lesbos and say to hell with men forever. It's just so ridiculous. Um, and you know, when, when gay people got the right to marry, oh, this is going to be the end of marriage. This destroys the, the validity and sanctity of my marriage. Guess what it didn't? It meant that there was more weddings that people spent money on, uh, and more people happy, more importantly, getting to express their love in front of all their, their friends and family in a way that was socially validated, you know, for right or wrong. You know, you, you can make arguments about, oh, the government shouldn't be involved in, in marriage. Of course, there has to be some, to have any sort of institution of marriage, the government has to be involved to convey certain rights, the right to inherit, the right to adopt your spouse's offspring, the, the right to make medical decisions about them. Uh, there's going to be legal matters that crop up when it comes to marriage. And there may be other ways of doing things where those same rights could be conveyed to just anybody, regardless of marital status. Uh, but that's the way we do things right now. So for now, it really does convey a lot of legality, and it must. James says, women burn their own bras, and people probably talk shit about their uh, their tits bouncing. What is wrong with people? Oh, absolutely. Now, that was, again, going to be the end of the world, the end of Western civilization, when women burn their bras and were no longer harnessing their bazooms. Uh, it's happened so many times that that it's ridiculous that anyone believes these these reactionaries anymore because their 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 fever dreams just never come true it's never ever as bad as they make it seem when they're preaching all this stuff in fact it's usually good it's well, strange as it may seem it's usually good to give more people more rights to bring people more on the same level as one another so that they can be equals not just in theory, not just on paper, but literal equals. Treat each other as equals. And hello, David. How are you? Glad to see you again. Moving on. Giving her work equally as important as the man's, but separate and different. Inside that equality... Yeah. Equally important, yet only paid a fraction of it. And this is a big part of the, the modern-day wage gap. It's not just about... Men and women doing the same job and women being paid less, because that does happen too. But the real big gap is the kinds of work that women are pushed into, guided into, care work positions, you know, taking care of the elderly or the disabled or children. Um, you know, these sorts of jobs that, that women tend to populate much more often than men pay shit. A social work degree pays shit. It is, I think, the, the most mismatched degree between 
number of years of college and hence expense because you have to take extra years of college, I believe. At least that was the case when I was an undergraduate in order to become a social worker, it, which, you know, brings up another point. Like, why does it take, you know, four and a half, five years to become a social worker, but three weeks to become a cop, which one holds a little more power than the other? That aside, because it's a, it's, it's a profession that women by and large go into more than men, uh, it is not valued as much in society. So separate but equal is bullshit from the onset. And the, and the case would have been true back then too. Women would have just been expected to do these, you know, these, these sorts of jobs, mostly out of a duty to serve you know, humanity because that's in their nature. And so why would they expect to be compensated uh, commiserate to that <laughs> even though they obviously should they obviously should I just want to put that in there as well because at some point or another everyone becomes old if they live long enough they will need care workers everyone probably has had loved ones that are served by care workers anyone that has kids virtually anyone has kids that go through school don't you want those people that do such a service, like everyone agrees these are, are essential workers. All of, all of these fields qualified to be essential workers during the pandemic. Don't you want them to be compensated well for doing the, the vital services that they perform? But no, according to society, they should be paid barely minimum wage and expected to work odd hours, long hours, double shifts, depending on the field. Um, teachers expected to take home homework and grade it on their own time, to do lesson plans on their own time, uh, to donate their own pocket money for school supplies for children that can't quite make ends meet, their family can't quite make ends meet. Uh, the list of, of, of expected sacrifices just goes on and on for these professions. And that's, that's the main disparity, more so than anything else. It absolutely does, James. That is true. There was the fact that the woman did not choose her mate, and once her marriage took place, her life was determined. One girl wrote in 1791, quote, The die is about to be cast, which will probably determine the future happiness or misery of my life. I have always anticipated the event with a degree of solemnity almost equal to that which will terminate my present existence. Mar it's horrible. These arranged marriages. The, oh, that entire system was just such garbage. You, know, you have to arrange marriages because you have to make a good match. Otherwise, the silly little thing will uh, marry for love, and then love is not going to pay the bills or put food in your children's mouth, so you better make sure that it's a good match. And um, Who cares if it leads to a life of misery and, and that you're any semblance of fleeting independence goes out the window at that point forever. Doesn't matter, you gotta survive, you gotta survive. Uh, what a horrible system. That's the thing that people had to face. And as a man, I would not want someone to be arranged for me either. That's just bizarre. It's only really half a step removed from, you know, marrying an indentured ser forcibly marrying an indentured servant or a slave because that's virtually what they were indentured servants that had no set length of servitude i guess i guess the only length of servitude would be the lifespan of the man oh okay so it looks like zen might be joining might be joining oh Oh, that's terrible. It looks like she might not be on tonight. That's unfortunate. Hopefully next time, though. I know she's moving at the end of the month here, so she'll be getting better Wi-Fi, more stable, and we'll be having her on streams more often. Men and women are different, and our money system has to be able to value those different abilities. 
Well, sure, there are differences between men and women, but why does the monetary system have to value those abilities differently? And why is care work not valued above just regular old business? I don't, I don't understand why, why are people that are absolutely vital to the functioning of a society not also paid commiserate with that level of importance. Education, nurses, care workers of every stripe, why are they not held up more? What, what's that got, and what's that got to do with ability either? <laughs> I mean, I, I, I'm not understanding where you're going with that, David. Okay, that wasn't clear. Are you saying that that's how society views things, or that's how you view things? Because one I can understand, and one I cannot. Anyway, let's move on. Marriage in chain, and children doubled chains. Ugh. One woman writing in 1813, quote, the idea of soon giving birth to my third child and the consequent duties I shall be called to discharge distresses me so I gotcha, feel as David. if I should sink. Thanks. Thanks for clearing that up. This despondency was lightened right. by that the thought that something important things. was given the woman to do, impart to her children the moral values of self-restraint and advancement through individual excellence rather than common action. The new ideology worked. It helped to produce the stability needed by a growing economy, but its very existence showed that other currents were at work, not easily contained. And giving the woman her sphere created the possibility that she might use that space, that time, to prepare for another kind of life. The cult of true womanhood could not completely erase what was visible as evidence of woman's subordinate status. She could not vote could not own property. When she yep. did work, her wages were one-fourth to one-half what men earned in the same job. Women were excluded from the professions of law and medicine, from colleges, from the military, putting all women... Hey, and now it's up to 90 cents on, or 70 cents on the dollar. So, hey, progress, right? <laughs> uh, I'm reminded, I think it was a Malcolm X quote where he said... If you stab me in the back, but then you pull the knife halfway out, you wouldn't call that progress. And into the same category. Giving them all the same domestic sphere to cultivate created a classification by sex which blurred the lines of class, as Nancy Cott points out. However, forces were at work to keep raising the issue of class. Samuel Slater had introduced industrial spinning machinery in New England in 1789, and now there was a demand for young girls, literally spinsters, to work the spinning machinery in factories. In 1814, the power loom was introduced in Wall- As long as I have a few of you here tonight, I just want to float an idea for a book to do after this one. I think I might take a little break from the, the well, from the nonfiction, it'd be, it'd be nice to get a work of fiction into the mix because fiction can be can have a power that that sometimes just reality does not because it can convey deeper truths using an artist's license um, and can put things into relief you know, put reality into relief in a way that perhaps just a dry recitation of the facts cannot. So what I was thinking that we would do is do. Um, the Jungle by Upton Sinclair. Uh, really great work. Just read the audiobook this year. It was actually the first time I read it. I was very impressed by it. I had no idea it had all the, the socialist messages in it that it does, but it does. And it, it, it goes through in very, well, sometimes graphic detail, though it is a work of fiction, uh, just the horrors of working class life in, in basically the, the tail end of the Gilded Age, right before the age of progress uh, yeah yeah I, I that didn't seem to fit what i what i know of you from previous visits david so i think you're right james that that he is not either of those things and i'm saying he if if that is not correct please you're always any of you are welcome to correct me on pronouns if i get them wrong um i i am not one of the fragile men that we have been looking at 
I can take correction. Because uh, I want to I want to correctly gender people too. I, I believe in just giving people a basic level of respect. Um, yeah. But anyway, so I was thinking the jungle might be a good one to do next. Well, well, well. Okay. Looks like Amanda may be joining us. Yes. Yay! James will be very happy. He's, he was missing you. Yeah? He's talking about pizza rolls. Pepperoni rolls have come up. It would, it would not be a stream with James in the audience if pepperoni rolls were not mentioned at least once. Hi, James. Is Natalie there, too? Natalie uh, is eating dinner right now. Her, her son is in town from California and oh, made them nice. dinner. So she stepped away for a while to make dinner. Um, Maybe she should have made pizza rolls. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm going to need to turn the AC on, huh? Yeah. All right. Well, That's... we're just going to have to put up with the white noise of our shitty air conditioner window unit. Hey. He does work hard. He's actually the best air conditioner we've ever had. Much better than our much larger living room unit because our landlords suck and do not maintain shit. What do you mean? They're not the most delightful people you've ever met in your No, life? close to it, but uh, yeah. Sloppily painting over the, the roof leak. Um, never fixing the doors <laughs> completely so that they break our keys when we try to get in. Never painting lines in the parking lot. Plowing maybe two or three times a winter. Uh, Once. It didn't snow that much. Never ripping out all the weed trees that are cracking the foundations and apparently letting vermin into our neighbor's places. We've heard stories recently. They add whimsical texture. Yeah, whimsical texture. Landscape. Yeah, it's, it's a regular Joe's apartment around here. <laughs> Just expect a kick line of roaches to pop up at any moment. Hey, I out. No, yeah. I mean, <laughs> luckily, cross our fingers, we have not had vermin since the very beginning of moving in here. Uh, no, we had them last winter. Do we have? We had a mouse, remember? It came oh, we up had... through the floor. That's true. We had a mouse. You're right. I mean, it probably had friends, but it's like, squeak, squeak. Yeah. <sighs> yeah. The, yeah, there never was. You're right, David. There never was a great a good reason, a valid reason, to devalue the work that women went into. It's just, the way I'm reading it through this chapter here is that they were so begrudgingly allowed women, quote unquote, to enter the workplace that they had to at least keep them in their place by paying them a quarter of what they paid men uh, and force them to do the same sort of work they would have been doing at home just for other men. I just want to say every man I've seen near a pile of vomit or a turd has really gotten quite choked up compared to women who deal with that on the regular and it's like, all right, it's a turd. Okay. You're talking about vomit. care work? Yeah. Yeah. That's kind of like, important context. Daycare, like nursing. he's walking down the street and there's a turd in the street and guys are going, whoa, and women are just like, whatever, right. it's a turd. <laughs> just <Flick>. kick it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, may I have headphones? Oh, yeah, I suppose you probably want to hear the book. Yeah, maybe. Instead of just following along with the closed I mean, caption. I the closed caption on, but... I do have it on. But the, the power loom was introduced in 1814. I'm sure that's going to liberate women, right? That, that gain won't entirely go to the owners, and that's not entirely the problem of the system, is that all gains go to the owner class and are not at all distributed to the workers. They just work harder. But they do all the tops. They just work so, so hard. hard. It's really hard to count that high when you're, when you're making money hand over fist on the backs of your workers. Scrooge so I, McDuck. I, yeah. <laughs> <sighs> oh, oh, there's a challenge in there. I mean, yeah, maybe be a touch, but really, I've seen more than my fair share of, like... But, you know, really, that's social conditioning, because, right. you know, little boys are, are cleaned up after their mothers. Um, they're, you know, some of them even is into their adulthood. Their mothers will still come over and clean their house and do their laundry. And, or or they... they Ironically, as much as, as they were talking earlier about I, how women should be childlike and, 
and 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 clingy and all this stuff because so many men just yeah i know you're just picking james we got oh. it but be, be, because so many men just I, then treat their their new wife as their mommy wife I just, who cleans up after them and and you know waves her magic wand and whoosh the laundry's gone and waves her wand again whoosh dinner's ready um i don't know where it comes from it's just always there uh yeah, men are ill-equipped just, to deal with the, the sort of hard, dirty, gross work that that is often thought of as women's work. I I just, you know, I wouldn't know what to do without Zach. I wouldn't even have any ideas. Like, Jeez, that reminds me of a conversation between Ben Shapiro, um, Matt, Matt Walsh. Uh, who else was in there? There was another couple chuds in there, too. Tucker Carlson. I don't think it was, it wasn't Tucker Carlson. And uh, Tim Poole showed up eventually, but this, he wasn't there for this part. But they were all talking about what is, they had been asked the question, um, what chore do you hate the most? And all of their wives said things like doing the dishes, doing the laundry. Like, and they're like, he wouldn't even know what to do. I was gone for a week and he just didn't clean any clothes. <laughs> like, that's fucking gross yeah. did you wash your butthole that entire time while she was gone too well or no you wait for her to do kinda, that well i mean it is kind of uh, touch your own i mean yeah you should just pay someone else to do it these are the giantest baby men on the planet right and they have the audacity to claim that they alone are the manly men the rugged individuals when none of them live up to their own standards even like I feel like I'm more comfortable with power tools than the typical woman. Oh, I was going to say than me, because I, I do power tools plenty. I know you do power tools. Okay. He also does laundry. Yeah, because I, I do laundry. hate it. And I cook most of the, the meals that we eat. Because he's a better cook than I am. Well, I like cooking, too. And he likes cooking. And I really could give less of a shit either way. Yeah. I just want food. <laughs> yeah, and, and she does the, the cleaning. I do the watering of the plants. I supposed to do the dishes but that doesn't always happen but i i jump in because yeah. that's how we are well we do that works. We, we, we help each other out we yeah. are cooperative yeah oh yeah my, my best friend uh she had a job felling trees with chainsaws for quite some time and she would teach you know men that were building skills i don't know if they were in prison or just nearly out of prison either way uh who had been through or were in the midst of the criminal justice system and she would teach them how to you know, run chainsaws and, and do land clearing and stuff like that. So, yeah. And and I, she's she's by no means a, a big, muscly woman, you know? So. Are you talking about who I think you're talking about? Yeah, Shannon. Oh. Uh, it's okay. okay. No, one, no one knows who Shannon is. Okay. And she doesn't even go by her real name on Facebook either, so it, it's not like anyone would find her. So. It's just, like, too, like, it depends on your skill set, like, Zach is more of a big picture person and I am more of a devil's in the details kind of girl like I keep track of the finances because that's more my strength and he's more like can write I hate writing I hate writing so much it gives me a yeah, lot of stress I love writing. and he loves it so so like if I, I have to write it. something I'll either ask him for help or I'll write it and then have him proofread it because I don't sure. trust me sure so we have a I, we have a pretty good division of labor, um, I would say. See, I don't like reading stuff visually. I, I much prefer audiobooks. It's one reason I chose to do the, the, the stream this way, also because it's helpful to have a different voice than my own reading stuff. You don't get quite as lost in who's speaking and, and for what purpose. But, I mean, I, isn't life just as really about, like, realizing what your strengths and your skill set is and working with that yeah for sure i mean obviously you want to try to push yourself from time to time but like well, as, as we were just learning though amanda the woman's job is to support the man and all of his dreams and struggles and just be the the supporter do i look like a two by four to you <laughs> I, I got to dreams support. too. Oh, oh, really? Because the the books didn't really mention that that was a possibility. <laughs> I I don't know. Well, well, any this of, is this is any one of the of ones the... we were looking at. Reflection, recollections of a southern matron. 
Stop. Actually written in part by a woman. Ugh. I know. Isn't that sad? That hurts. Like, and you can get a free digital copy from a Michigan library. How about no? <laughs> like, again. <sighs> Women don't even get their own ideas. They don't even have their own thoughts. Like, no. my mom and I strip furniture and, like, refinish it and reassemble it and, like, paint it or stain it cool ways, put new hardware on it. Like, that's a fun thing for us to do. I wish I could... I wish I were better with power tools because I would love to make some of my own stuff because I get things in my What kind of power brain. tools would you wish you had? A saw... A water saw for tile. Oh. Uh, it's not really technically a saw because it's just water using t using water. The same, to grind it's the same tile effect. Down. It's the same effect. Yeah. Well, okay. I wish I had those things. Yeah, I know we have cool. a tile cutter. Well, but... hey, one more reason to get a place with a garage, huh? Just saying. Unless you want to go down to the scary murder basement. What do you got? Okay. Or if we have a finished basement, I suppose that would work, too. I'm going to tell you guys a thing. Yeah. So we're on this house journey. I know. Laugh it up. Warn us. Warn us, warn us, warn us. It's uh, awful. We're, we're, just so, we're just so sick of renting, though. It, it, we got to get out of here. So, Zach likes to go in the murder basement. I, I want to see every basement. I don't want to see... I don't want to leave any part of the house unseen, because that could... That's usually the part that they're going to hide shit in. If I'm not, if I'm going to hit my head, or I'm not going to be able to hold on to something, or I'm going to fall through the steps, I'm not going to go there. Okay. I don't have health insurance yet. I so can't what are you going to do? Kind of risk. What are you going to do if I'm gone and you're at home and the the water heater goes out? Drive to the store. What? And just pick up a guy and say, "Hey, come." Fix my water heater. I'm going to call Inspire Renovation. <laughs> hey, guys. Well, that's true. You do know a lot of people now. <laughs> Fine. Guys, the water heater is broken. Come help. <laughs> <sighs> Whatever. I have resources. You do. All right, let's, let's hear some more about the power loom. Waltham, Massachusetts, and now all the operations needed to turn cotton fiber into cloth were under one roof. Wow. The new textile factories swiftly multiplied with women 80 to 90 percent of their operatives. And women got paid 80 to 90 percent better than they did before, right? Because they're so much more productive, right? Most of these no. women between 15 and 30. 15 and 30! Literal children working in these mills. That, that, that's great. That, this, that is the, the future, the future past that the right wants. Like, literally. Yeah. Like, the, the, you know, libertarian fever dream is having kids working in mills again. You know, Some you of the earliest industrial car, strikes took place in loop. these textile mills in the 1830s. Eleanor Flexner, A Century of Struggle, gives figures that suggest why. Oh, sure. Women's daily average earnings in 1836 were less than 37 and a half cents, and thousands earned 25 cents a day, working 12 to 16 hours a 16. day. 16. In Could you imagine working 16 hours? There's literally not enough time to do other things. You would have to, like, s clock out and go to sleep in order to get your eight hours in. So obviously they're not getting that because they got to go home then and take care of kids and, and put dinner on. And who knows what shifts their, their spouse might have. Um, 16 hours. That's no life. That's no life at all. No free time. Well, don't the men just help the women? Don't they just cooperate and take care of the children that they've created together? Even together? still, could you imagine you and I working 16-hour shifts? We no, would die. Our, our kids would hate us. Yeah. In Pawtucket, Rhode Island, in 1824 came the first known strike of women factory workers. 202 women joined men in protesting a wage cut and longer hours, but they met separately. Four years later, women in Dover, New Hampshire, struck alone, and in Lowell, Massachusetts, yeah, in 1834, a when a young woman... So I'm reading about these looms, okay? Uh-huh. When operated by skilled and attentive weaver... Oh. The looms were not dangerous. Oh, but it's unskilled work, but that's why they get paid less. 
Okay, well, let me... Just Don't Kanye me. I'm, I'm, I'm not... I'm capitalizing you. That, that's what capitalists say. Well, whatever. Same first letter sound. However, there were a number of inherent dangers in the machines, which to inattentive, poorly trained weavers can fall victim. Most obvious is moving... The moving reed, the frames in which the heedles and pinch or sand utilized to keep the cloth tight as it presses over the front of the machine and onto the doff roll. The most common injury was pinched fingers from distracted or bored workers, broken hands, hair getting tangled up oh. in the warp itself and ripped out of your head. Oh. That sounds horrible. Okay, I work in Spedgall. Getting your hair pulled is not... It's not a joke. It's not a joke. Because they'll weave the fingers in and it fucking hurts. Like, really bad. So, like, if anybody ever minimizes a two-year-old having the hair pulled, I'm out. Like, no, you don't understand. Especially if you have darker hair because the bulbs at the end of the hair follicles are larger... So to force those out yeah. is extra painful. Yeah, it sounds like pretty horrible work. Oh, and then also having the shuttle fly off and hit you. Fun. You give concussions. Cool. However, that led to OSHA. <laughs> that led to OSHA. That well, led hey, to OSHA. You know, silver lining after all. Made to feed them pepperoni rolls and take them on kayaks. Yeah, kids. <laughs> yeah. And was fired from her job. Girls left their looms. One of them then climbing the town pump and making, according to a newspaper report, quote, a flaming Mary Wollstonecraft speech on the rights of women and the iniquities of the moneyed aristocracy, which produced a powerful effect on her auditors, and they determined to have their own way if they died for it." Unquote. A journal kept by an unsympathetic resident of Chicopee, Massachusetts, recorded an event of May 2, 1843. Quote, Great turnout among the girls. After breakfast this morning, a procession preceded by a painted window curtain for a banner went round the square, the number 16. They soon came past again, then numbered 44. They marched around a while and then dispersed. After dinner, they sallied forth to the number of 42 and marched around to Cabot. They marched around the streets, doing themselves no credit. There were strikes in... Ah, oh, very easy to be an armchair uh, critic. Sorry, can I just add one more thing about those looms? Yes, please. Sometimes when those shuttles would come flying out of the machine, they were going at like 200 plus miles per hour. Oh, shit. Could you imagine getting... No. You know, major league uh, baseball players can have serious head injuries getting hit by a, you know, a less than 100 mile per hour ball. Right. So imagine like twice that. Mm -hmm. Ugh be dead yeah it's amazing or, more didn't just die i'm sure there's probably more data there like yeah. completely disabled for life and then oh what kind of use are you to society but anyway i mean imagine being a woman in this time and and having you know patriarchy pressing you down on all sides really begrudging you entering the workforce which like also that too this this myth that women only really entered the workplace uh, during World War II, like the Rose of the Riveter shit. Definitely not true for the working class. That was only true for classes that could afford to have one adult in the household stay home. Uh, and that's still true today, too. By and large, the, the women that are, that are you know, stay-at-home moms or just homemakers or whatever are from the, the middle and upper class. Okay. So luxuries for them but you know the struggles of the lower class just kind of get swept under the rug for you know 100 years here which is sad because like i mean i won't lie i don't have children i would love to work from home 
I would love to finish furniture and bake bread and haul yeah. it out to the markets on the weekends to pimp my wares. And then be a, a home inspector. And then be a home inspector part-time. during the week. Yeah. A man, a man is going to be studying to be a home inspector. Apparently a very well-paying job and doesn't take much. You just got to pass, pass some tests. Test. Uh, yep, pizza and pepperoni rolls. Can't forget the pizza pepperoni rolls. <laughs> Natalie subscribed tonight, so that was really oh, cool. That's she, nice. she, has, she has a, a Twitch Prime account, so she, she used her free account on me. Oh, really cool. look at you go. Yeah. I'm so proud of you. Yeah. I support your success. Thank you. Thank you, as you, as you dutifully should. Just kidding. I just as I support your success. Various cities in the 1840s look at these women. more militant than those early time, New England turnouts, together but mostly daring unsuccessful. To in the face of these a succession of strikes in the Allegheny Mills near Pittsburgh That's demanded amazing. a shorter yeah. workday. Several times in those strikes, women armed with sticks and stones broke through the wooden. How much you want to bet the the common response? from the conservative men at that time was, oh, a shorter work day? What are you getting, lazy? You can't work 16 whole hours in a day? Let's talk about that. And now the, and now the, the supposed standard is half of that. But Well, even then, it should really be like a half to three quarters of that because they say on a good day, most people are only productive for four to six yeah. I mean, it, it depends their... on what you do, but yeah, that, that is true. I mean, I feel that. You're not a loser, James. You're, you're one of my greatest uh, watchers. I just keep giving James shit because he hasn't subscribed yet. So. Why do you got to make people I, feel uh, bad? Oh, I'm just revving him. What it's are you it's con- okay. He's, what are you, he's conservative? A... No. No. It, it, he's, he's been a great, uh, you know, booster of this channel since, since basically the beginning. Jeez. So. I, I, Poor I'll James. Just get him. Oh, I'm sorry. Poor James. See, look, now you got Amanda in here. James, do you want me to talk to Zach later off camera? I will do that for you. <laughs> we don't treat our friends no. that way, Zach. I'm happy to have everyone here, regardless want... of ability or, or willingness to pay. That, your, that's your, fine. This is your for everybody. Feelings, your feelings are yours, and your feelings are valid, but your feelings are not Your feelings reason. also suck. Your feelings so, are not a reason to mistreat others. Quit being such a shit mouth and let up on James. You're not a loser at all, James. Even you're zero percent loser. Even though your your senator is one of the biggest losers in the Senate. Who is the senator? He's from West Virginia, so. Oh, I'm sorry. I know, right? <laughs> Beautiful country. I should laugh. Beautiful part of the country, bad. but uh, yeah, shitty senators in the pocket of the coal and gas lobby. I'm not in the pocket of anybody. I do what I want. The fuck he does. In gates of a textile mill and stopped the loom. Catherine Beecher, a woman reformer of the time, wrote about the factory system. Quote, Let me now present the facts I learned by observation or inquiry on the spot. I was there, midwinter, and every morning I was awakened at five by the bells calling to labor. The time allowed for dressing and breakfast were so short, as many told me, that both were performed hurriedly. And then the work at the mill was begun by lamplight and prosecuted without remission till twelve, and chiefly in a standing position. Then, half an hour only allowed for dinner, from which the time for going and returning was deducted. Then back to the mills to work till seven o'clock. It must be remembered that all the hours of labor are spent in rooms where oil lamps together with from 40 to 80 persons, are exhausting the healthful principle of the air. And where the air is loaded with particles of cotton thrown from thousands of cards, spindles, and looms. You think they'd be catching fire. Yeah, right. And the life of upper-class women? Cotton fluff. Frances Trollope, an Englishwoman in her book, Domestic Manners of the Americans, wrote, quote, Let me be permitted to describe the day of a Philadelphian lady of the first class. This lady shall be the wife of a senator and a lawyer in the highest repute and practice. She rises, and her first hour is spent in the scrupulously nice arrangement of her dress. She descends to her parlor, neat, stiff, and silent. 
Her breakfast is brought in by her free black footman. She eats her fried ham and her salt fish and drinks her coffee in silence while her husband reads one newspaper and puts another under his elbow, and then perhaps she washes the cups and saucers. Her carriage is ordered at eleven she till that hour she is employed in the yeah. pastry room, her okay. snow-white apron protecting her mouse-colored silk. Twenty minutes before her carriage should appear, she retires to her chamber, as she calls it, shakes and folds up her still snow-white apron, smooths her rich dress, and sets on her elegant bonnet. Then walks downstairs, just at the moment that her free black coachman announces to her free black footman that the carriage waits. She steps into it and gives the word, Drive to the Dorcas Society. At law, a fee... You no, know, she's just a lady of her time, but my god. She sounds like another lady of our time. Yeah, who would that be? <coughs> Shapiro. Oh, yeah. That, that, that is a very classic lifestyle, I, I'm sure. Oh, I In her wildest dreams, Abby could only imagine that sort of thing. Like, listen, if you're in that kitchen and you're cooking, you should be dirty. You should be messy. No, you should have a snow white apron from doing all of your washing yourself. Because that's how you refrain from getting wet or dirty. It's by doing work. I make bread and I get flour everywhere. Yes, you do. There's no... Wow, thank you. You do. It's okay. Okay. It's judging me. Not judging. Female Labor Reform Association put out a series of factory tracks. The first was entitled, Factory Life as it is by an operative, and spoke of the textile mill women as, quote, nothing more nor less than slaves in every sense of the word, slaves to a system of labor which requires them to toil from five until seven o'clock with one hour only to attend to the wants of nature, slaves to the will and requirement of the powers that be. In 1845, the New York Sun carried this item, quote, Mass meeting of young women. We are requested to call the attention of the young women of the city engaged in industrious pursuits to the call for a mass meeting in the park this afternoon at four o'clock. We are also requested to appeal to the gallantry of the men of this city and respectfully ask them not to be present at this meeting as those for whose benefit it is called prefer to deliberate by themselves. <laughs> Around that time, the New York Herald carried a story about, quote, 700 females, generally of the most interesting state and appearance, meeting, quote, in their endeavor to remedy the wrongs and oppressions under which they labor. The Herald editorialized about such meetings, quote, we very much doubt whether it will terminate in much good to female labor of any description. All combinations yeah, end course. in We're nothing. Not joking, James. The title of Nancy it's Cott's book, The Bonds of Womanhood, reflects her double view of what was happening to women in the early 19th century. They were trapped in the bonds of the new ideology of women's sphere in the home, and when forced out to work in factories or even in middle-class professions, found another kind of bondage. I love it. <laughs> yeah. I actually just like put a little bit in my hand and blow it right into his face. You do. It's just like that, that scene in, in that awful Batman movie with Poison Ivy. And she takes a little thin look. And then I'm just like smitten with the love dust. Yeah. yeah. But it's really flowery. Right? It's really flower, but I pretend for her sake. Yeah. And then and then I give her over all of my secret identity to her. Yeah. Which is landscaping bro. <laughs> or hikers. On the other hand, these conditions like created a common consciousness of their situation and forged bonds of solidarity <laughs> among them. Yeah. Exactly. Middle class women barred from higher education began to monopolize the profession of primary school teaching. As teachers, they read more, communicated more, and education itself became subversive to old ways of thinking. It's the end of society. <laughs> That's what we've been. That's what we've been seeing. This has I been a, a persistent theme through this book. Every time women get a little tiny bit of equity or freedom, it's like it's the end of Western civilization. Western man has fallen. 
Okay, I kind of want to sidetrack here a minute. Of course. What do you got? What do you got? Jeez. Always with the harassing. I ain't harassing. So, education itself is like... (laughs) (laughs) um, Females, right? Mostly women. Not all, but mostly women, right? Mm -hmm. And it's always, oh, you're trying to... You're trying to convert our kids, blah, 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 blah. And it's like, or program our kids. It's like, listen here, butthole. If we could program your kids, they would do their homework. And they would turn it in on time or early. So don't talk about that. But then also I think about the other kids. Because by the year 2030, white students will be the minority. And I think that should be... I think white students maybe already are the minority. We're really close. It's just about to switch. I'd be interested to see that. But we don't treat non-white children that well. Like, we don't cater education to them, even though we should. Yeah, damn. That's, that's pretty close. 22 million white. This is in... Uh... What year is this? The internet's been really iffy. Let's see. 2022. There are over 2 million in early child teacher, early childhood teachers currently employed in the U.S. 92% 92% are women. So this is early childhood. Um, let's see all the race in here. Oh, so it is still significantly white. Huh. Oh, this is among teachers. Oh, this is not the students. That's the wrong stats. But, like, we need to have a, our eyes open up because St. Paul public schools are down 300 teachers. Yeah, that's pretty crazy. Like, they're going to have super omega classes. It's pretty crazy. Oh, let's see. Oh, it's teachers again. This was in my cultural competency state quiz test thing I had to do. Students. Huh? I'm going to type in students. Maybe that'll give me better results. But, like, again, it's like this, like, subtle suppression technique. I'm not going to talk about your culture or anything like that. And because we don't do that enough, they have higher dropout rates. Because you're not meeting them where they are. Oh, here we go. These people are going to be losing their mind. Oh, God! Oh, God! So, 45.8% white. So there you go. Already a minority. United States K through 12 public schools 2020. 15% black, 28% Hispanic, 5.4 Asian, 0.4 Pacific Islander, 0.9 uh, American Indian or Alaska Native, and 4.5 two or more races. Interesting. Mm-hmm. So there you go. That's the that's the future makeup of the U.S. But we need more teachers of color. We need more male teachers. If you're a man and you're watching this and you're considering a career in education, I encourage and support you to come into this field. Don't laugh. No, I'm laughing at James's <laughs> comment. I, I mean, I know you're kidding, but that doesn't necessarily mean that Twitch knows you're kidding. So just <laughs> go easy there, but. <laughs> I encourage you to come to education. We need you. 
Right. And it's right. a man's job. It's everyone's. It's a people's job. Well, let's try to get up to about 55 minutes. Oh. I, I only have a few minutes left, so I want to try and get just a few more minutes in. Sorry. They began to write uh, for magazines and newspapers and started some Hi, ladies' woman. publications. Literacy among Didn't women say. doubled between Hi, 1780 and 1840. Women became health reformers. They formed movements against double standards in sexual behavior and the victimization of prostitutes. They joined in religious organizations. Some of the most powerful of them joined the anti-slavery movement. So, by the time a clear feminist movement emerged in the 1840s, women had become practiced organizers, agitators, speakers. When Emma Willard addressed the New York legislature in 1819 on the subject of education for women, she was contradicting the statement made just the year before by Thomas Jefferson in a letter in which he suggested women should not read novels as a mass of trash with few exceptions. Mm. Quote, for a like reason too, much poetry should not be indulged, unquote. Female education should concentrate, he said, on, quote, ornaments, too, and the amusements of life. These for a female are dancing, drawing, and music, unquote. Oh, I wonder why all the, the MAGA chuds of today are all against those things in education. And anyone that has a degree with that is, is seen as anything less than. Huh. Could there be some kind of a link there between one and another? I mean, Probably. Yeah, I know that, James, but, like, if someone was in the chat and they were, you know, not acting in good faith, they could report you, they could report me, and uh, things things would not be good. So you, you just got to be careful. <laughs> you know, I'm not, I'm not mad or anything. I'm just, you know. I'm not friend, mad. Friend, I'm friend, just... friendly, friendly reminder. <laughs> Emma Willard told the legislature that the education of women, quote, has been too exclusively directed to fit them for displaying to advantage the charms of youth and beauty. The problem, she said, was that, and quote, the taste of men, whatever it might happen to be, has so been made into a standard for the formation of female character. That's right. Reason and religion teach us, she said, that, quote, time. we too are primary problems. existences, not satellites of men. In 1821, okay. Willard founded the Troy oh, Female oh, Seminary, the first recognized institution for the education of girls. She wrote later of how she upset people by teaching her students about the human body. Quote, Mothers Again, visiting a class at the seminary in the early 30s were so shocked at the sight of a pupil drawing a heart, arteries, and veins on a blackboard to explain the circulation of the blood that they left the room in shame and dismay. Oh my gosh. Imagine what they would think now with just the most rudimentary sex education class. They would basically faint themselves to death. I have worked in education for about six years now. Uh -huh. And I have never been in a school, in a classroom, where sex education was taught. It doesn't happen. I have, however, had a female student or female presenting student approach me one time at least each year to explain to me that she is bleeding and when I ask her if she needs a band-aid or something else she has to pull me aside to tell me that she's got her period but she didn't know that she it's, didn't understand it's, it's, what was going on it's so tragic that anyone would go that long without knowing like my daughter knows what periods are and what reproduction is She's seven, so, I mean, she could be in that stage of her life in just a couple of years. So it's a good thing that she kind of knows what to expect. I mean, I would imagine that even if you've had sex education, you don't quite know what to expect. No, but, but... At least she's got some knowledge going in. It's not going to be a carry moment where she just runs around the locker room smearing her blood on all the other students because her mother just never told her. Well, and I mean, I was able to communicate, hey, I think it's happening... Where are the products? Yeah. But, I know, super, some people are a little, oh, don't talk oh, about that. Oh, it's vag blood, oh. What is it? It's vag blood, ew. Oh. oh my gosh. It's whatever. I remember in the past there had been people that I would date and I could not leave any of that product in the trash can. I would have to take the trash out. 
because they're just too like Ugh. yeah and then there's me who like i'm dumping the trash into the garbage to take it out and like some of the pads are stuck to the side and i just rip it right off and shove it in i'm sorry that's okay <laughs> I mean, I I definitely take that position over yours. Sorry, but I'm glad I'm glad I don't have to deal with that every month. It's nothing like a water slide of blood. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, especially if you had it at the the wrong age or something. Or, you know. Oh yeah, I would have been murdered. Hey, again, it's like Carrie. You know. Oh, you must have uh, been seduced by the devil, or else you would not have been cursed with his. Monthly blood right or whatever, whatever it was. Yeah, your mom was nuts. I yep. gotta, I gotta brush my teeth. All right, thank you so much, but, Amanda, for being on the stream. Yeah. Uh, thank you all for joining me tonight. I think I'm gonna wrap it up here for the night, oh. but, but hang in there, hang in there. Oral Wait. hygiene is important. Don't Oral hygiene is important. Floss. Yes, that's right. Brush, mouthwash. That's right. Anyway. Um, hang in there, we're going to raid into another channel on Twitch. <laughs> if you have any suggestions of someone you would like us to... Oh, why? Uh, why? Why are you kicking my phone around the room? Thanks. God, sorry. If you have any suggestions of anyone you would like me to raid into, now is the time to, to say so or forever hold your peace. Bread channel, the bread channel. The, the bread channel, yeah. Thanks to the plug. Everyone, check out Bread Channel. Hey, bread. Let's see who is on right now. Uh, I'm thinking maybe Feminist Critique. It looks like they're just getting started up. Match Game Mondays. Cool. Universal Discourse is always good, too. Kanur is getting up into higher numbers. I, I usually like to help out lower number creators. Boy Meets Mini is someone who I just found out about. Um, I'm going to see what they're doing right now. Because maybe that's something we'll do. Eh, I think we'll pick, we'll pick someone different. J. Chow Live. I don't remember even subscribing to this person. Beard Bash Jocelyn. You know what? We'll do Feminist Critique. I would imagine that just starting up so thank you all for joining me uh no wednesday stream again we're still in the process of looking for houses and that's kind of taking up our wednesdays unfortunately so we're not doing the the short theory wednesdays uh so it's going to be again until sunday before i see you all uh but looking forward to being back together again and uh yeah if you're if you're on twitch and joining the raid let them know where you came from and all that good stuff Feminist critique. So here we go. Thank you, everybody. Have a great night. Uh, only by teammates and followed. Oh, I thought they followed me. Well, that's unfortunate. A lot of people are in that mode lately. There's been a lot of hate raids around. So we won't be able to do feminist critique. Maybe we can do no comment chick. Also a great channel. Oh, doing Awaken with JP is cringe. Absolutely right. I love no comment chick. So another good one. Hopefully, they will let me raid. We'll see. Thanks a lot, James. Good to have you here. And uh, here we go. So we'll try again. See if it works with no comment. Chick? Nope. Does not. Boy. It's getting to be difficult. Uh, Universe Discourse, I think, is the next on my list. We will try and raid them. Looks like they're having some fun tonight. Let's see if they will allow a raid. Indeed they do not. Seems like everyone's circling the wagons on this one which makes it hard to branch out if you're a smaller lesser known creator boy someone had suggested beer bash johnson 
That didn't work last time either, so we're going to try it. Thanks for hanging with me. We'll see if this one works. Nope. Ah, I'm really coming up empty. For people that will let me raid into them. Kind of frustrating, kind of frustrating, I gotta say. So this, this boy meets many who I just got recommended talking transit news, so maybe that'll be fun. Uh, CRT, motorsports. Okay. Anyway, well, we, we'll see. We'll see if they will allow us to raid. Hopefully someone will let us raid. I feel kind of shut out. Alright. Boy meets me. Ah, oh, this one finally worked. Alright, <laughs> have a great night, everybody. See you next time.